In, the, in this video, we are going to talk about the use of the cardiac monitor in the ICU setting and ER. Cardiac monitors are actually used to continuously monitor the heart rate, which is 134 here, and there is a display of the rhythm lead, continuous rhythm lead, where you see a P wave present and R2 R regular, which is a sinus rhythm, so it's a sinus tachycardia. This is systolic and diastolic blood pressure and mean of 78. And uh, this is in millimeter of the mercury. These two are the rhythm leads. These uh, There is continuous display of the ECG rhythm. 97 is saturation, which is with the help of the probe, which when we take off from the finger, there will be no uh, uh, waveforms, but here it is let's see if we take the probe of the finger there will be no display of the waveform of the saturation so 28 it is the respiratory rate when we put it back then there will be nice and smooth waveform formation and there will be 98 uh, percent display of the spo2 now systolic blood pressure is 118 and diastolic is 63 and mean is 78 which is two third of diastolic plus one third of systolic and it is continuously being uh, checked after every five minutes because we have selected the dial at five minutes now we open the uh, menu setting of the nibp and there are certain options we can engage and change with the help of uh, knob which we uh, rotate clockwise or, or anti-clockwise then we just push it in to engage the setting the, these are alarm settings and uh, the unit setting the unit is millimeter of mercury which we can have as kpa as well but we take it as millimeter of mercury here now uh, there is time adjustment setting we can make it manual or automatic manual is when we are to push every time for the checking of the blood pressure to inflate the cuff but when we adjust the timing starting from one minute to 200 480 minute the cuff will be inflated automatically after every this much of the time be it one minute five minute one hour 60 minute or 240 minutes then uh, there is a concept of the inflation pressure of the uh, cuff the inflation pressure of the cuff should be more than the pressure which we will actually no no this is five minute this is the adjustment of automatic time after which blood pressure will be checked automatically now then we'll uh, this is going to be the last uh, then it is the inflation pressure of the cuff it should be more than the pressure which we are going to check for example if a patient has got a blood pressure of 160 by uh, 160 by 90 and we are we have adjusted it at 80 millimeter of mercury inflation pressure it will not inflate more than this so recording will not be proper so we make it 200 or 200 plus millimeter of mercury the inflation pressure this is the pressure generated in the cuff which is used to measure the blood pressure in the patient so this is the inflation pressure then in the nibp setting which is non-invasive be blood pressure monitoring this is the knob we use to move either clockwise or anti-clockwise to take the cursor up or down this is the alarm setting we'll push in to engage and we'll make it on then we'll push again and move it clockwise or anti-clockwise now we move it and then we push it in we set the priority at the higher level for the alarms then there are three settings of systolic diastolic and mean blood pressure systolic diastolic and mean can be recorded uh, we can adjust the alarms high and low if the blood pressure goes higher than this or drops lower than this if the mean goes higher than this and drops lower than this and if the diastolic goes higher than this and lower than this then each time 
when the limit is crossed there will be a beep of the alarm and if we look at these settings then uh, we can see that these are two extremes of the alarm higher and lower so this is diastolic one is the high and one is the low this is 27 then there is another thing now we we get out of this uh, menu of the nibp non invasive blood pressure here we see the 97 is saturation and 128 is the heart rate we can also go into the set set uh, menu setting of the spo2 the menu setting of the spo2 shows us alarm which we can make on or off using the dial and then there are two limits there can be a higher alarm limit there can be a lower alarm limit if the higher alarm limit is crossed there will be beep and then if there is a lower alarm limit there will be a beep so spo2 menu also has alarm settings for the higher and lower saturation for example if if in a copd patient saturation goes higher than 94 you and you had adjusted the alarms there it will start beeping likely if there is a pneumonic patient and you do not want the saturation to drop less than 88 then there will be alarm beeping once it goes less than this and then there are certain other settings which are not directly related with our working in icu these are more of the technical and speed issues so better to know those values which are important are those settings or adjustment which are important so this is spo2 menu now we exit out of it and now we will go to the ecg setting heart rate setting let's see that if we press ecg setting and we go into the menu of it again there is an alarm which can be on or off then there can be a priority adjustment which can be low or high and there can be high or low adjustment of the alarm like if the heart rate goes more than 127 there will be alarm beeping as it is happening right now we have adjusted the higher uh, pulse rate alarm of 127 and the heart rate is 133 so it is beeping like likewise if we we can adjust the lower alarm limit if the heart rate goes less than 50 there will be alarm beeping and uh, there is a sweep adjustment okay we can also do one thing that we can adjust from where we want the monitor to uh, record the heart rate either from the ecg or from the spo2 because sometime if the patient is having shivering is irritable is when other or we are doing the cold sponging of the patient we we may have to take the ecg leads of the patient then we need to monitor the heart rate from the spo2 or the pulse oximetry probe so in this setting we have these two options we can have the heart rate from spo2 and we can also have the heart rate from the ecg so we have two options then there is a option of sweep but what we mean by sweep sweep mean we can have a tachycardia or a bradycardia falsely this is the sp speed setting 25 mm per second is normal otherwise 50 causes bradycardia and 12.5 causes tachycardia so we exit out of it then Uh, we also have uh, two or three uses we can change the size of the amplitude of the ecg we can make it higher amplitude we can make it lower amplitude 
by lower we mean we can make it 0 0.05 this is a sensitivity adjustment we use 0.25 in those patients who are very thin and uh, they have got higher amplitudes which are false amplitudes so we make the sensitivity 0.25 we lower the sensitivity so ECG is recordable within the monitor and we can make it 0.5 it would be a little bit higher amplitude ECG and we can also make it point from 0 0.5 to 1 or 2 so we can use the knob to rotate it and then we can do it.